So now we're going to jump ahead eight to uh, 2014. This is July 3rd, 2014. Mayor Pete Buttigieg, 4th of July greetings from Afghanistan. Now he's in Afghanistan. And this is on the YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel City of South Bend. So this looks like official City of South Bend YouTube channel. Only 796 subscribers. Here we go. It's the word Afghanistan on black. Hi, everybody. This is Lieutenant Pete Buttigieg coming to you from Afghanistan again. And I uh, wish there I could is. be there with you tonight to celebrate July 4th. Uh, we always do a great job celebrating Independence Day in South Bend, and I know this year is going to be no exception. Uh, I also wanted to take this opportunity just to thank South Bend and everybody there for being so supportive, not just of me, so but of it's washed out behind him. Uh, it's bright white. He's like under kind of like a, a military looking tarp. He's wearing uh, camouflage with the, the the flag patch on one hand. It seems like it's pushed forward so it's visible although i don't know i mean it, it, maybe it's just a large shirt clothing can hang weirdly sometimes i guess but it's very clear that he's wearing the united states flag patch um you know just hey everybody it's me pete i'm in the empire i'm putting in my tour of duty here on the front lines of uh of our invasion of a country and uh i want you to know i'll be your leader someday i'm gonna be god i am god mckinsey says that god can produce increased profits 14 percent of everybody who is in uniform serving around the world right now. It makes a huge amount of difference to everybody serving abroad to know that we have folks back at home thinking of us and supporting us. Uh, in the same way, I'm thinking of you and uh, in particular, Me? really admire the way that neighbors have been helping neighbors uh, get through the aftermath of the storms that hit our city earlier this week. Uh, so with that in mind... You mean the one you're not there to help with because you're working on your presidential campaign by being a a fake military guy that he was actually in the military. It's not fake, but there, I have a couple articles to get into. Um, he, he took an unconventional route and, uh, and, and didn't put in as much time as others. So, um, he took more risks than I've taken to defend the country. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's all part of the project. Hope everybody has a fun, safe, uh, terrific 4th of July holiday. And I cannot wait to be there in person back in South Bend later on this fall. It ends with, oh, that's horrifying. So now it ends with a uh, U.S. flag waving, happy 4th of July holiday, and then um, a logo comes up, the city, it's like this, the city of South Bend, Indiana. And it just had, <laughs> this, the, the logo, 1865 is on, it's a circular, kind of one of those government circular logos, and it's a U.S. flag and the word peace Looks like the U.S. flag is being shot out of a sun, kind of a sunrise sort of th image ish in the word peace from a guy who's uh, dressed up as a warrior, surrounded by weapons, instruments of death, peace. But then it's a baseball song. Here, let's just finish this. This is going to be horrible to edit, but. What is this? <laughs> Play the national anthem, you fool. Um, yeah, weird move. Your mayors and, and, and this this kind of thing would play to American brains incredibly well. Oh my God, my son, the guy who's better than my son is uh, now he's over in Afghanistan. I, I, if I didn't like him now, now I really love him. He's over there willing to commit violence on my behalf for my safety. Commit violence for my safety, Pete. Um, or taking risks, so not to discount the efforts, the risks that uh, people in, 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 I have much more um, ire, not much more, but my ire is aimed at the civilian decision makers, the institution of violence that is our entire system is dependent on them and America's global empire. Um, so I wouldn't knock some 18 year old kid who gets recruited into this system via some, uh, you know, America, America's army, which is a video game. Like, like a lot of these recruiting, there's, there's deliberate, psychological operations to recruit children using video games at much younger ages than 18. So, and, and, you know, I think, I think the way they recruit is horrifying. This guy jumped in and joined after being a McKinsey guy. He like worked his way in, uh, after being the Rhodes scholar and the, all, all, all this and all that. So that, because this is an incredibly valuable upgrade, you know, like if you're playing Zelda, this is what it's like to, to get one of the, uh, some upgrade. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't yet who hasn't yet celebrated Zelda. So 
a little skepticism is warranted here, though. Um, a, a Wall Street Journal op-ed was published. This is look, we're looking at the independent uh, British thing, I think. And uh, the headline is Marine Veterans Criticize Buttigieg for Overstating His Military Experience. Subheading is Mr. Buttigieg skipped all that. No obstacle courses, no weapons training, no evaluation of his ability or willingness to lead. Those words came from this Washington Journal op-ed they're referring to. Let me make the text a little bit bigger here. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh, got something threatening to make a noise. On, oh, there's the close button. All right. Uh, this is from a guy named Greg Kelly, who is a, ho a, a host at conservative Newsmax TV and a former pilot in the U.S. Marine Corps and Katie Horgan, a Marine officer deployed in Iraq for 13 months between 26, 2006 and 2012, who wrote the piece. So there's, they wrote an op-ed uh, criticizing Buttigieg from a right-wing perspective. Now, I'm not saying I think that that automatically means they are, their information is incorrect. I hope, though, what they're saying about Pete is accurate. I feel like in the Googling that I did, so we're going to read it here, but it's on. I have found it on Reddit. <laughs> Um, cause it's paywalled or I don't know. I just, I didn't even try Washington journal. So here it is on Reddit. Um, the, this is under our actually liberal gun owner. There's a lot of stuff on Reddit. And, uh, so I'm taking this with uh, in good faith that what they're saying about Pete was fact checked because it wasn't a high profile newspaper. Of course, that's a, might be a naive assumption, but I, I don't have a reason to think this is all bullshit. Cause in the Googling I did, I would think I would have found that. And I have, we're going to follow this up with a political fact article, um, kind of getting into some of the stuff that seems to verify some of it. But I didn't spend a ton of time on this, so maybe maybe this is all wrong. I'm not necessarily even going to read all of it. But so here we go. This was originally in the Washington Journal. Uh, when Mayor Pete Buttigieg talks about his military service, his opponents fall silent. The media fall in love, and his political prospects soar. Veterans roll their eyes. CNN's Jake Tapper asked Mr. Buttigieg Sunday if President Trump quote, deserves some credit for the strike that killed Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani. No, the candidate replied, not until we know whether this was a good decision and how this decision was made. He questioned whether it was the right strategic move and said that his own judgment is informed by the experience of having been one of those on one of those planes headed into a war zone. So he's referring to Pete Buttigieg's response to that question about killing. So from the right wing, they really like that. He, like, I don't recall the details. Uh, incredibly well, but um, Trump, in a surprise move, killed this like very prominent Ara uh, Iranian military leader, risking escalation and provoking. It's a very provocative thing. The right wing loved it. They love any kind of aggression. And it's also when 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 people in our time frame talk about how Trump was somehow anti-war. This is one of those things. It's like no, he wasn't. What are you fucking out of your mind? You think he would have? Just in the, the the generic sense that he would be against the military industrial complex is absurd, but he did stuff like this. He just just assassinated high profile t targets. That's not anti war. Risking all American soldiers and troops and all that. That's not anti war. Um. So there seems like they're coming at him, criticizing him because he he kind of uh, Welsh. Is that the right word? Waffled. He he didn't seem to answer that. Yes, it was the right thing. But why would he? He's not. He's not a right winger. I mean, he's he's certainly a capitalist defender, which is inherently, you know, for maintaining the status quo. But anyway, okay, back to the what that guy wrote. But Mr. Buttigieg's stint in the Navy isn't as impressive as he makes it out to be. His 2019 memoir is called "Shortest Way Home," an apt description of his military service. He had, okay, he entered the military through a little used shortcut direct commission in the reserves. The usual route to an officer's commission includes four years at Annapolis or another military academy or months of intense training at officer candidate school. ROTC programs send pro prospective officers to far-flung summer training programs and require military drills during the academic year. Mr. Buttigieg skipped all that. No obstacle courses, no weapons training, no evaluation of his ability or willingness to lead. Paperwork, a health exam, and a background check were all it took to make him a naval officer. He writes that his reserve service, quote, will always be one of the highlights of my life, but the price of admission was an ongoing flow of, of administrativia. Hey, uh, that's not how it's supposed to work. The paperwork isn't the price of admission, but the start of a long, grueling test. Combat veterans have grumbled for decades about the direct commission route. 
The politically connected and other luminaries who receive immediate commissions are disparaged as Pomeranian princes. Former Trump Chief of Staff Reince Priebus became a Naval Reserve officer in 2018 at age 46. Hunter Biden, the son of the former vice president, accepted a direct commission but was discharged after one month of service for failing a drug test. All right. That's what makes him so cool. Mr. Buttigieg was assigned to a comfortable corner of military life, the Naval Station in Great Lakes, Illinois. Paperwork and light exercise were the order of the day. I do light exercise. Working eight-hour days, he writes, was a relaxing contrast from my day job, and spending time with sailors from all walks of civilian life was a healthy antidote to all, to the all-absorbing work I had in South Bend. He calls it a forced but welcome change of pace from the constant activity of being mayor. That's quoted. During a November, I guess I'm kind of, I don't know if I want to read all this, but during a November debate, Mr. Buttigieg proclaimed, I have the experience of being commanded into a war zone by an American president. The reality isn't so grandiose. In 2013, he writes, he made sure my chain of command knew that I had, I would, would go, would rather go sooner than later and would rather go to a Afghanistan than anywhere else. All right. So he's getting into all the stuff that, that, that Buttigieg has quoted, um, Okay, he writes, I'm just skipping a couple ahead here. Mr. Buttigieg spent some five months in Afghanistan where he writes that he remained less busy than, he had, than he'd been at City Hall with more time for reflection and reading than I was used to back home. That's quoted. He writes that he would have take, take, probably taken. He writes that he would have take, taken a, quote, a laptop and cigar, a laptop and a cigar, up to the roof at midnight to pick up a Wi-Fi signal and patch via Skype into a staff meeting at home. End quote. The closest he came to combat was ferrying other staffers around in an SUV. In his campaign kickoff speech last April, he referred to 119 trips I took outside the wire driving or guarding a vehicle. That's a strange thing to count. Combat sorties in, in F-18 are carefully logged. Driving a car isn't. So the guy's calling out Buttigieg for not putting it in the way lots of other guys did. Um, all right, I'll just finish. We'll just finish with this one here. After the welcome home rally, glowing press, a few more years of light service, the mayor left the reserves, but his bragging rights were assured. The ca candidate Buttigieg takes every opportunity to lean in on those months in Afghanistan. Questions ranging from student debt to Colin Kaepernick to gun control prompt him to refer reference his military stint, sometimes, sometimes in indignantly. And there's a little bit more of that. Uh, so jumping ahead here, just because we got to keep moving. 